Well, I think, Mike, you, have to, you, you really have to look at it. Yes, it didn't end well for Andy Reid, but let's not forget about nine playoff appearances. I mean, that, that's, it's, what, it, what it really comes down to is Andy Reid in his heyday was one of the top five head coaches in the National Football League. If you don't, if you don't believe me, ask the coaches that went against him. The guy was phenomenal. But, you know, he, 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 you know, he never won a Super Bowl, sure. But the fact of the matter is you look at his coaching tree and, 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 and Doug Peterson is a guy who played for him, is now coached for him. And, and I think when you look at Doug Peterson, he just has, when you talk to people in the league, that look at, boy, he's going to be a head coach someday. You, just, you, you like how he manages people. And let me, let me also mention this. 1999, Mike, no one knew who Andy Reid was, especially the media. He'd never been a coordinator. I talked to Joe Banner, who uh, obviously is the former Eagles president. He, I was working with him the previous two days. Andy had so much presence in his interview. He dominated. He just had a way about him. He was so organized. He, he just knew he wanted to be head coach and prepare for it. And, and as you said, he's an Andy Reid disciple. So let's not just criticize the decision to look at Doug Peterson. He is one of about eight or nine guys at a minimum who are going to get a look. And, Mike, the difference between this coaching search and 13, where they only focused really on two guys and had to interview others when certain guys didn't, couldn't make a decision, this one is deep. It's not just going to be Peterson or Shermer. Uh, or, or Ben McAdoo, who we interviewed today, I believe, and, and, and some other guys. There's going to be a sleeper like Paul Gunther, who I mentioned yesterday uh, on NFL Insiders. Eagles like he's going to have an interview. Paul Gunther is a local guy. He's a Bengals D coordinator. He's done a phenomenal job. He was a head coach at our science college at 25 years old. So that's a name. He, he's my top sleeper for the, uh, this, this interview group. Yeah, and he's a defensive-minded guy. It seems that most of the guys are offensive-minded. Let me ask you about Shermer then, because he too was yeah. with Andy. So that connection there has got to help him out. But does he have a leg up because of Bradford's endorsement? You know, when we say endorsement, does it factor in if the Eagles decide they want to bring Sam back? Sure. But the fact of the matter is we are where we are now. Bradford's future with the Eagles is completely undecided. They don't know what they're going to do yet. They don't even know who their head coach is going to be. Uh, I think the Eagles do like Pat. I think he's definitely in the mix here. He, uh, he's a guy they really know. He's on a second tour of duty with the Eagles. It's a guy that they know. And, and, and what they do, the difference between this one, this, this coach research and the last one is they're going with a lot of people that they know that they have either a relationship with or they've gotten no through either coaching searches where they've gone up against it, it, it's kind of, uh, and, and I know they've done a lot of work on Gunther, kind of trying to figure out what, who he is, and uh, that's good. I, I, again, I think they're doing a lot more work on the bigger picture than the smallest that they had in, in the last coaching search. Do, do they like Shermer to stick around as a coordinator? Is he kind of like the fallback guy if uh, you know the, the guy they want doesn't come here? Where where do you think he kind of falls in this whole situation? No, I think Mike. I think he's a legitimate candidate, and. It'll be up to the new head coach if Shermer doesn't get the job, uh, you know, to, to take a look at who he wants to have. They're not going to force anyone on anybody. It, it's just a matter of who do you want. I think when Chip Kelly came in here, his thing was he didn't, you know, he never worked in the National Football League. And the Eagles helped him out a little bit. Uh, they, they gave him some names to look at, but in the end, Chip made a decision on who he was going to hire. Uh, but when you work in the National Football League and you've been around a while, you have certainly an advantage over guys who've never worked here. Uh, what about Adam Gaze? Where do we stand there? It seemed like he was the guy. Then uh, he's down in uh, Florida. He was coming back this weekend. He's not coming back this weekend. The Dolphins don't want him to get back here, but he doesn't have an a interview <laughs> scheduled. So uh, what are we feeling about Adam Gaze at this point? Yeah, I think we have to be careful. I don't do play-by-play of coaching searchers. I, I did that in 2013, although it was really a lot of fun with Bill O'Brien and Chip Kelly. I certainly don't want to do that again. I'm not going to do it here. I just know that Gase interviewed well. Uh, he's a guy that they like, and uh, he's got a lot of interest. He is, by the way, the top head coaching candidate for all teams, uh, all seven now, seven teams, by the way. Uh, he's or five of them, and we'll have to see what happens. And, you know, where, the, the, by the way, these coaching searches, Mike, they don't end until probably right before the Super Bowl. As a matter of fact, they may in, in two, two and a half weeks, but filling out the coaching staffs usually take almost all of January. Yeah, and obviously we know that the uh, Philadelphia Eagles uh, tried to act quickly on this, but it seems like they've kind of hit a little stall here because of these reasons. I mean, there's other guys out there. Do you think after this week, uh, we haven't heard some names like a Hugh Jackson. McDermott's name hasn't been brought up at all. Do you think that there are still some dark horse candidates to come? No, I mentioned Paul Gunther. He was, he was really the one that I'd heard of, I would say, Monday, that they're probably going to take a look at him, and they are to their credit. 
Uh, Hugh Jackson's name has not come up in conversations I've had with people about uh, the Eagles coaching search. Doug Marone's has not come up, although there were rumors that, that he might be coming in that, that I've not heard that. Uh, are there any sleepers? So, you know, Terrell Austin's the guy, I, I believe he would be another one. He would be another one who, who's, who's probably one of the top four or five names. It's a name to keep an eye on yet. They don't have anything scheduled, but uh, I wouldn't dismiss that name, who's the Lions D coordinator, who's really a very strong candidate this season. Uh, but it, we're, we're going to know all the names. Yeah. It's, there, there's not a lot of secrets yeah. anymore. But uh, I'm very interested to see what happens with Doug Peterson's interview, uh, which obviously cannot happen until after the, the, the Chiefs game. Uh, and then uh, I mentioned Paul Gunther. He, he's, he's certainly highly qualified and a guy that's very interesting. And I'm, I'll be, I, I, you know, I, I want to hear from people kind of how these guys did and did they learn anything? Because I think what happened to Dirk Cutter in 13, his name has not come up uh, uh, for this search here. But when you go through these searches, sometimes you learn something about people you didn't know, and then later on you may you, you never know you may ha- hire one of these guys as a coordinator. So there's certainly a value of bringing these guys in. Yeah, how do you explain McAdoo here today? Uh, I mean, it was that yeah. that seems like no one's talking about it. Doesn't seem like it's realistic at all. Well, Ben, you know the questions about him, like, is he ready to be a, an NFL head coach? He he went through the coaching search for the first time two years ago with the Browns. Clearly, was not ready from talking to people. This time around, did a great job as a Giants de- uh, offensive coordinator. As a matter of fact, you know, you, a lot of people believe that he, he's, he's going to be seriously in the mix of the Giants' head coaching job, obviously, with Tom Coughlin leaving. Ben already had his interview, I believe, but the fact of the matter is this guy's probably ready. Uh, he's still young. I mean, a lot of these candidates, Mike, are around the 40-year-old mark or younger. McAdoo's younger than 40. So you have to take a look at that. But uh, in the end, the bottom line is every team has to get the right guy for them, a guy that they're comfortable with, and a guy that they actually can get to know through the process. Uh, Adam Kaplan, at Kaplan NFL, ESPN NFL Insiders. Are you surprised McDermott has not been talked to? Well, it's interesting. You know, Mike, when he was dismissed as the Eagles defensive coordinator after taking over for the late great Jim Johnson, he was a guy that may have gotten the job before he probably should have. Maybe he wasn't ready for it, but you saw him really build his resume with the Panthers, and he's a very strong candidate. And talking to people close to Sean, he definitely wants to be a head coach. There's no question about it. He's ready to be a head coach. Uh, the Browns, I believe, were interviewing him today. I think I, I, talking to people around the league, there were two other teams that were considering talking to him to bring him in or talk him over the phone. You could also, by the way, Mike, have a phone interview. Then if you like what you've heard, you, you, you schedule the in-person interview. But, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. And Mike Shola, uh, the offense coordinator for the Panthers, is you know I haven't heard him on any list yet. And other guy, uh, Josh McDaniels, you're, you're hearing a lot of offensive-minded guys. But how about the two coordinators in New England? It doesn't seem like uh, there's a lot of buzz for either Matt Patricia or Josh McDaniels. Well, John Robinson, let me give you a little insight here. John Robinson, the, the Buccaneers uh, personnel director, is going to interview for the Titans' uh, GM job. I think if Josh McDaniels wants to, I think those two guys could be working together if Robinson gets that job in Tennessee. That's kind of the way it works. When guys have worked together with each other, sometimes the head coach says, says hey, or the candidate says, hey, if I get a job, I want to bring you with me and vice versa. So those two guys know each other. They work with each other. Uh, that's certainly a possibility. Matt Patricia is going to interview uh, for the – for the Browns head coaching job. Uh, there are two other teams that I know of are kind of interested, and they haven't scheduled anything yet, but I know he's on a couple more lists. Yeah, you generally look to the best teams in the National Football League. And he, another name that's not out there yet, and he's not, he, has not interv- he has an interview this time around, is Greg Roman, the Atlantic City native, who's a Buffalo Bills offensive coordinator. I'm a little surprised that he has not gotten a look. He is going to be a head coach, Mike. There's no doubt about it. He's a strong candidate. He's, he's one of the best OCs in the league and, and has probably the really the best running offense right now if you talk to people around the league. He's a guy that that he may or may not get an interview this time around, but certainly will be a head coach in the future. Yeah, and and, uh, I'm glad you brought him up. We've had a lot of calls about him, obviously, uh, with him being from here. We've had him on the show many times. Um, Why is it just because he moved from San Francisco? Because he seemed like his name came up the last two years, but not at all this year. Yeah, and if you remember, Greg interviewed for the Penn State head coaching job that went to Bill O'Brien. He's interviewed in the past. I think what happens is you mentioned him moving on, and Buffalo didn't make the playoffs. It's just this is, the league is so subjective with this stuff. To me, who cares? Do your homework. 
understand what this guy brings in. Bring him in for an interview. If you don't like him, don't hire him. But do your homework and find out who the best candidates are. Just the, it, the league is so subjective with that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, well, and you see a guy like Gaze, whose team wins six games, and yet he's the hottest yeah, name on the list. Right. Exactly. It's a great point. What is that? I mean, you know, the Bears are certainly – they were more competitive than people thought. It's because of the great work he did, Adam Gase did with Jay Cutler and then previously Peyton Manning, but what makes him a better candidate than Greg Romans beyond me? Uh, Adam Kaplan. Adam, if Philadelphia hires, which guy should the fans feel the best? Uh, which guy do you think it gives this team the right energy, the right boost, and puts them in the right direction? Because if you ask the question, I would ask the question, this is a 17 win that is a disaster or a 17 win that's desirable? Well, the problem that you have with this particular goal is you don't know who's going to be your quarterback. You know, just from talking to people, I don't. I think it's it's still unclear who the quarterback's going to be going forward, and and that's the attractiveness to the job is no. You, you know, every head coach candidate will tell you the first thing they they look into who is going to be my quarterback, even if they're they're from the defensive side of the football, because that is the number one position on the football team now. Eagles have a decent amount of picks. They don't have a second. You know, that's a little bit of a concern, but they're going to be picking fairly high up. Uh, I don't, one of the top two quarterbacks, or you know, the top two guys probably won't be there where they're picking, but this is an okay roster, but this is a long-term view. There are, not, there are no quick fixes. I think if you talk to people with the Eagles, they know that their dalliances and free agency clearly didn't work. They're not going to do that anymore. They stopped doing it for a little bit. Then this past one, Chip Kelly, unfortunately, made a big, de- actually, a big decision that completely backfired on him. I, I think they're going to go away from that. I think they're going to take the long-range view of building for the draft. Uh, in your opinion, well, well, let me ask you this question: they, These candidates is Chip Kelly the best candidate of the guys who's out here? Should they have just stuck with him, seeing what they're interviewing? Well, I think, Mike, the, the problem was it's not about was he the best head coach. I think that things were so bad for the players, uh, Chip and, and, and really the, the, the organization. I think it just it, 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 it had to happen. I, 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 knew it, I knew that Jeffrey Lurie, the owner of the Eagles, was uh, very upset with, with uh, things that, how things had been done. It, it wasn't working. Uh, the, the, the night before Chip was fired, I went on Twitter and said, listen, don't be so sure Chip's coming back. And people were like, you know, couldn't understand why I'd say that because I'd known for two months that Chip was in trouble. And it's it's about relationships. It's about ma- how you manage people. And if, and there's there's a reason why Chip has not had an interview with a team like uh, he 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 very well could be sitting out this season. But I I, I do believe this about Chip. He's a good coach. I hope he's learned something from the, from uh, what happened here. And uh, I think sometimes we have to take a look at ourselves. Yeah. But. I like Chip personally, and I think he's a good coach. And he will be. My prediction is he will be a head coach of the National Football League, but maybe in 2017. So yeah. I, so realistically, it comes down to a rift between him and Roseman, just beyond repair. I, I, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about. I actually more talked about the players. I'm talking about, and that that obviously was there. That's why things were changed a year ago. But I think it's just managing players understanding what today's player wants remember chip did not come from the national football league he never coached here before and i think it progressively got worse and you know coaches tell me the thing that they didn't understand about the job was it's less less about x's and o's it's about how you manage the frank and the joes that's really a true statement it, it, and, and it, it kind of that you, you saw the players really went after him after he was fired they, they didn't really hold much back uh, Adam Kaplan, Kaplan uh, NFL on uh, ESPN's Insider Show. I saw him on there earlier today with plenty of more good stuff on the coaches. And obviously, I guess number one will be uh, what to do with Sam Bradford. And, and I guess because this regime, uh, how he was there and they were there, but I guess they didn't have a hand in this trade. I, I, maybe they don't have ties to Bradford. Maybe they don't even want him back. Who knows? That, well, that's got to be. That's the thing, Mike. What I don't know is, and also it's it's extremely different, uh, difficult um, to put a value on his contract because he, 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 he was hurt again this season. Though, boy, over the final six games, he really looked like a quarterback, but that's been the problem. Mike, he's so up and down with his injury history. It's hard to commit a, a ton of money for him because it's going to cost probably 60, 16 to seventeen million a year if they go for a long term deal. Uh, the Eagles try; they try to short term and a long term before the season. His agent Tom Condon is extremely difficult to deal with. He's a great agent, 
and he's very demanding. He he sets a price that he doesn't move, and Tom is Tom's the best. There's no question about it. He does a great job, but he's hard to negotiate with because he gets a number in his mind. He doesn't move off of it, and that's a big reason why the Eagles were unable to retain Jeremy Macklin uh, because he he had a number in mind and he got more money from the Chiefs. And God bless him. All right, uh, Adam Kaplan, everybody. Good stuff as always, Adam. We appreciate it. Happy New Year to you. Same to you. Thanks.